Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Bloody Jacob here, bringing you my weekly review of The Walking Dead. This week's episode is entitled Spend. And damn, uh, let me just say, uh, probably the two goriest deaths we've seen on the show so far. And, uh, yeah, that, that's saying something to a fair degree. I mean, The Walking Dead's had its definite, you know, like, uh, gross-out moments. You know, I think of, like, especially when it comes to character deaths. Um, you know, I think of, like, T-Dog as having a pretty gory one, uh, you know, and Dale back in Season 2 when he got, you know, his stomach ripped open. But these two, I'm sure I'm forgetting some, too, so feel free to remind me in a friendly way below if I have but uh, these two deaths right here in this episode spoilers it's in the title so I don't have to say it now but spoilers Noah and Aiden and no not Aiden wait from being human played by Sam Witwer thank god that would never happen anyway um, but of course Aiden Deanna's son and we know Noah Mr. Everybody Hates Chris or in this case as people are saying over the internet Everybody ate Chris. You know, like everybody hates Chris. You get it? You sure. Got it. All right, got it. But yeah, the two goriest deaths of the. Did I say goriest or glorious? I think I said goriest. I hope. But uh, yeah, the two goriest deaths of the show so far, and we'll get it right into that part of the episode right away. Um, of course, we've seen in the weeks, or the episodes prior, that Aiden had been, you know, like, taking out Glenn, Noah, and Tara, you know, as, like, uh, scavengers, basically, you know, or to, basically to go for supply runs and stuff like that. You know, with the treatment of that walker being tied up that almost got Tara killed and stuff like that. So they go on another supply run, basically. And, uh, and, of course, Eugene's looking for some supplies as well, in particular. And they get to the spot, and, you know, there's basically, like, a... There's this, like, big, like, warehouse type of area, I want to say it is. This warehouse type of building. And, you know, basically, uh, I think his name is Nicholas. Is that Deanna's other son? I forget if it's Deanna's son. Hmm. Let me look that up real quick. Excuse me. Hmm, no, I don't think he's Dan's his son. I could be very wrong about that. Uh, but let me see. Okay, this is taking too long for me to do. I forget if he's uh, Aiden's son or not. Uh, no, not Aiden's son. Holy shit. <laughs> I forget if Nicholas is supposed to be Deanna's son as well or not. I know Aiden definitely was. But basically, Nicholas says... Uh, and they're trying to like formulate, okay, if things go wrong, you know, where, how are we going to get out? You know, we need to have, like, you know, two exits at least or something. Or we need to, you know, figure out where all the exit, uh, exits... Uh, I am on a roll tonight, guys. They need to figure out where the two exits were. And, you know, Nicholas didn't think that was, you know, very, you know, uh, worthy of thinking about. So he just says, oh, yeah, we're going to go out through the front. And then, like, almost, like, within a couple minutes after that, we see the front just completely surrounded by walkers and covered by walkers. So, yeah, imagine if they wanted this plan right there. <laughs> Uh, but things turn out very badly anyway. Um, they go in there, they, they're scoping around, it's like really dark in there, there's no lights on. So the episode has like a really, really good, like a horror type of tone to it, like old school zombie horror type of tone. And they're shining lights and things are going pretty well. And, oh, I mean as well as they could for a zombie apocalypse. Uh, zombie apocalypse. Zombie, as well as they could for a zombie apocalypse supply run. 
and uh, there's even a scene between Tara and Eugene. You know, and they, uh, you know, Tara just pretty much runs him down and says, "Are you really that much of a coward?" And that really plays into the episode later, as you'll see, which has a very good development as well. But uh, eventually, there's a. Uh, they see like these walkers, and they're all like uh, behind this like uh, fenced off area. And you know, the, of course, they're covered, so they'll be fine. They just have to watch where they're going and stuff like that. <sighs> Excuse me. That's what happens when you wake up at five thirty every morning. But uh, you know, they're in this fenced off area, and one of the walkers approaches, and you know, he is in this like armor, sort of like the SWAT or the prison riot guards that we've seen in season three. And of course, uh, Aiden is approached by one, and he doesn't really know what he's doing. In all honesty, he's not very intelligent about it. And you know, instead of doing what Maggie does, you know, I'm trying to like stab him under the chin or something under the helmet they're wearing, or even as Glenn says, wait for him to get close, so maybe you can get like a good shot from underneath him or something like that. But now Aiden just tries to shoot him in the body a few times, and he shoots him in the leg. And he keeps on shooting him, just like sort of toying with the zombies, sort of like having fun with it. And then, of course, he shoots a grenade, and that causes the whole thing to. <laughs> so that explodes. And I'm not sure how, how Aiden at least survived that in the first place, considering that like blue, like the area around it, around too. Because he was like within a few feet in front of it, so I don't know how he survived this thing at all. But apparently, uh, Noah, not Noah, um, Aiden was, like, blown back by it, and then he was impaled. Like, one was, like, going through his, like, shoulder area here, then another is, like, down here somewhere. And, you know, basically, uh, Glenn survives, you know, Nicholas survives, Eugene survives, Tara is injured, and, you know, knocked unconscious. You know, she has, like, some, uh, a wound, like, on her head area or something like that. Uh, we'll find out how serious that is later, I'm sure. And, but she's technically still alive, and I really hope they don't kill Tara off, by the way. We'll get into more of that later. And, uh, of course, Aiden's pretty much, you know, trapped. He's impaled on those two rods or spikes or whatever they are. Uh, broken pieces of the building. Not the building. Whatever. He's impaled. Okay, we'll just say he's impaled. I need to stop talking myself into a corner. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, Glenn and Noah and Nicholas, you know, run up to try and, you know, like, pull him off. And that grenade going off actually, you know, uh, tore down the fence that was keeping all those walkers out of that main room, out of that main area. And, you know, of course, all these walkers are approaching. Noah is actually becoming a good shot, so he's you know, like nailing headshots left and right, holding him off while Glenn and Nicholas are, you know, trying to pull uh, Aiden off. But of course, it's going to be too too painful for Aiden, and he'd probably die anyway if they kept on trying to pull him off of it, or at least you know, I'd cause you know his death eventually or their deaths in the meantime if they kept on trying to get him off of it at the very best. <sighs> oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um. Oh. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'm tired and sort of like in my own little world right now. And Raw is playing in the living room over there, so I have to get out there pretty soon. But I really need to learn how to do these reviews a little bit earlier. But, uh, and these walkers approach, and they finally decide to they just have to leave Aiden behind, and. Aiden is basically like torn to shreds. I mean, he's he gets his guts, and, you know, torn out of him. He's disemboweled pretty much, you know, Dead Rising style. And you know, of course, walkers are like on the side, so I'm like, you know, taking bites out of him and stuff like that. So that was very gory, and that took that took the award for probably gory stuff we had at that point. Um, you know, along with like the Otis Dale. T dog stuff like that as far as character that's go. Again, remind me if I'm missing one that was like that, but um yeah, so we had that and then we had this uh moment with uh oh, we'll get to Eugene and Tara in a second. Um you know Tara 
is brought into the room by Eugene, and Eugene's sort of like hiding out until the other guys come back. And uh, Glenn, Noah, and Nicholas get to this revolving, you know, glass door, except they're, you know, walkers on come up on both sides of it, so they're, they're actually trapped in the revolving door. And, you know, it becomes a case where we have Noah and Glenn on one side, then Nicholas on the other. And basically, if one of them pushes and tries to get out one way, the other is going to be, like, turned and open for the walkers to come in through, you know, their way they're facing. So, you know, Glenn's trying to, you know, talk to both of them, saying, oh, yeah, we have to do this at this exact moment, and then we'll break the glass and we'll try to get out together. But, of course, Glenn tries to break the glass with a gun, and, you know, it's pretty durable, so it's not breaking. And, of course, Glenn cares about Noah, Noah likes Glenn, and, you know, they care about each other, you know, they're like a group now, they're a family, in a way. And, you know, so they're going to try and, you know, keep people alive and keep themselves alive and keep everyone they can alive. But Nicholas, of course, he doesn't really care about them very much whatsoever. And so he eventually just tries to bolt to the outside, and that thus leaves uh, the other side coming open and Noah is basically grabbed and pulled into the horde of walkers still in the warehouse and you know the revolving door turns and you know Glenn is pretty much forced to watch as Noah is just completely and literally in the most literal meaning possible of the expression he is just completely torn apart and just like Aiden you know we see him being you know getting bites taken out of him and you know you know being stuff being torn off of him but the goriest part of it was when the walkers were you know grabbing his they're grabbing his face they're taking out his like eye and then they're they tore his jaw off so there's your description of it um i'm a horror fan so i can handle it but even even i cringed while i was watching that because that was probably the most graphic death we've seen on the show the goriest death Especially with that focus up close to the face and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't, like, love Noah as a character. I didn't really care about him that much at all, to be honest. But just the fact that he was, like, a good-natured character and, you know, he was a nice guy and stuff. And to, you know, see someone like that get such a brutal and undeserving death like that, you know, is kind of, you know, it makes you, it hurts you a little bit. You gotta, you gotta feel a little bit for him there. And, uh, yeah, and Glenn, Glenn's reaction just really made the scene even more effective because, you know, you see him, like, in the thumbnail I have here, you know, he just watches the whole thing and, you know, he's, like, really just broken by it, you know, he's, like, completely torn apart by it. Nah, he wasn't literally torn apart by it in the emotional sense, you know, he was, like, really upset by seeing all that and, you know, he just completely lost it over seeing that happen to Noah. And then... We see uh, Eugene, you know, the groups distracted by the flare, and then by Glenn and Noah dying and the rest of them. Uh, you know, Tara's still not awake, but she's still alive. And Eugene, despite being called a coward earlier, actually, you know, he, as he said to Glenn earlier, he makes he'll make sure he'll protect her and keep her safe. G Eugene actually, you know, puts Tara over his shoulder and carries her out of the room. And he has a gun, and he actually shoots down a couple of walkers. Really cool. And then he gets her out of the building, which was really awesome to see. Just the atmosphere and that whole music that I'm playing in the background while Eugene was doing that. Eugene's really developing as a character. And I really hope Tara's not dead, because I just find her really damn likable. I love uh, Alana Masterson. Um, I think she plays the role in a really, really fun way. And I know she's like one of the ones that are always at risk nowadays, but I'd rather not have her die. I'd like her to be around for a while longer. It's because she's so damn likable as a character. But uh, for now, Eugene gets her out of there, and you know he finds a van, and you know, he pulls her onto the front, and you know, he starts uh, drawing the walkers away from the glass door, and. Well, he actually drew the walkers away from the glass door before the whole Noah thing happened. I kind of got out of order there. But, uh, so Nicholas runs to the van, and, you know, he tries to pretty much hijack Eugene and, you know, like, drive off by himself and leave, and leave you know, like, Glenn and Eugene behind, you know, saying, you can die with your friends. And he, like, 
pretty much tosses Eugene out of the car, except, you know, with Eugene actually resisting and refusing to back down from him, which is pretty impressive to see for the character. And, uh, but luckily Glenn shows up just in time, and he just, like, slams, like, uh, Nicholas on the pavement, and, like, punches him in the face twice over, you know, what he did to, to Noah, basically causing Noah's death and putting him in that position in the first place. And, yeah, a lot of people think Lencho just killed uh, Nicholas right there. And, yeah, I don't disagree. He definitely deserves it. Um, so it'll be uh, a nice, satisfying death when he eventually meets his. So all that was really brutal and really very sad. Like I said, I didn't really care about Noah. But I thought uh, you know, Taylor did a really good job playing him. Um, you know, for the role he had anyway, he was pretty decent all around. And, you know, like I said, it was just... It was effective because, you know, seeing such a good-natured, nice guy die in such a fashion, you know, is it, it's, it's upsetting. And, you know, of course, Glenn's reaction, you know, really uh, solidified it, too. So that was all good. Um, oh, good, yeah. I, I enjoyed it in my own twisted way. I'm sure you guys did, too, if you're fans. And uh, so that was awesome. Some really intense stuff. And... Uh, we also get a scene of Abraham, you know, working at a construction site, you know, in Alexandria. They're going to be putting up more walls and stuff like that. And we see, like, a guy named uh, Tobin, I think his name is. Uh, the same guy who offered to show uh, Carol how to shoot <laughs> uh, in a previous episode. And, and then, you know, eventually, you know, like, walkers show up. And, you know, that's one guy who falls, and then they're shooting... They're shooting guns, and, you know, they're trying to, you know, they're taking them out with that, you know, they're shooting them in the head and stuff, and all these walkers are just coming out of the forest, and we seem like birds flying overhead beforehand, and, you know, they're pretty much, uh, we see one of the guys running out of the forest, which, you know, drew the rest of the walkers there, and a girl named Francine, you know, she trips, and, you know, she's on the ground, and the walkers are approaching her, and Tobin basically calls them off and, you know, says, you know, they're just gonna go and hide basically and run off and leave Francine behind but Abraham actually steps up and he says you know he basically just goes after Francine all on his own he takes all the walkers down around her and he puts her in this you know construction vehicle and you know hides her up there while well, he just like takes out walker after walker in a row just really badass in a really badass heroic way and to see Abraham, you know, stepping up again like that, you know, is really cool. I, I like Abraham's character quite a bit now. I have for a little while now, ever since those flashbacks back in the first half of season five to his wife and stuff. You know, like, self-help especially. Um, and this is a great Abraham moment right here, and the best one of the best parts of the episode. And uh, we see Tobin, you know, it's a lot of good action there. And, you know, Tobin gets punched in the face by Francine after that. So Francine looks like she's a pretty frisky girl. Uh, feisty, I should say. <laughs> um, so I wonder if there... Some people are wondering if there's been like a weird triangle between uh, Abraham, Francine, and Rosita. I don't know. I don't think I really need that, but we'll see what happens. But Tobin actually is telling Di Deanna about it uh, later on. And you know he actually says, yeah, I couldn't do it. I, if uh, Abraham didn't, didn't do what he did, uh, Francine would probably be dead right now. So I'm glad uh, Tobin didn't really lie about what happened, and that Abraham is basically made into like the head of their construction. So that's really cool. And then we get you know Maggie and Deanna sort of talking about you know what the group is doing for them, what the members are doing. You know it's their the way the uh, you know their people know how to handle things is something Alexandria needs, which is you know demonstrated by Abraham and you know what the others have done so far with you know Rick and Michonne being constables. And where was Michonne in this episode, by the way? <laughs> I miss the hell out of her. But there's a lot going on anyway, so it's not like a huge deal for now. But I'm sure we'll see her back next week. I think we did see her in a sneak peek. Uh, so that was all really good. And, you know, of course, once Maggie's done talking to Deanna, Father Gabriel uh, meets with Deanna, and he basically tells them that, yeah, Rick and his group, they can't be trusted. They're evil. They're pretty much doing the devil's bidding. <laughs> and how can... Uh, Gabriel say that when they saved him how many times and they never had to. So I don't really get Gabriel's line of thinking here. Does he think if if he's such a coward, does he think like uh, being with Alexandria's group alone is better than sticking with Rick's group on their good side? I don't see how. <laughs> uh, but 
I don't really get Gabriel's line of thinking here, but he pretty much betrays the group, and Maggie overhears all of it, so that'll be hell to pay, I'm sure. So that's good. Um, I'm not sure if Deanna will believe him and all that or not, because, you know, she already thought, yeah, that we, they had to do some stuff to survive, you know, which is why they did it, and that, for the most part, is true. And I hope she's not... I hope she just thinks Abraham, not Abraham, I hope she just thinks Gabriel's psychotic because of the, you know, his religious mumbo-jumbo he is using to say all of it. But, I don't know. So, we'll see what happens with that. That's good, though. And on a very uh, lighter, well, not really lighter, but less, I don't know, less graphic. Not really. <laughs> because there's a, some, there's an implied dark thing going on with this side of stuff as well. Um... You know, Rick comes across uh, Jesse again, and you know she says they have this like whole owl sculpture built up and stuff, and someone destroyed it. And Rick is gonna start looking around for it, and you know we find out later, you know, and Carol is having another conversation with Jesse's little son, you know, Sam, you know, who wants more cookies, and uh, Carol is being like really bitter and mean to him. I get that Carol doesn't want him to, you know, like talk about her, you know, getting guns and stuff like that. I don't know if she has to be this like overboard cold about it because that's just going to push him to fear her more, make him more afraid. So that has the potential to, for it to get out like that anyway. So in a way, Carol is thinking flawed here too. I don't think she has to be this cruel to Sam, but uh, Carol actually picks up on the fact that Sam actually he admits Sam actually admits to destroying the sculpture, and he doesn't say why he did it, but he has like a lot of built up anger apparently. And that goes along with the theory that Pete, Jesse's husband, you know, and Sam's dad, you know, possibly abuses Jesse and Sam and the other kid as well. And, you know, he's like this drunk and he approached Rick earlier in the episode, you know, and ba they basically teased him knowing about there being a connection between Rick and Jesse. And, you know, he offered to give him, a ch give him and his kids a checkup. That's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, because he's the town doctor, the community doctor, I guess. And, uh, you know, eventually Carol tells Rick about that, that, you know, Pete is hitting Jesse and Sam. Some people the theorize that Jesse's actually the one hitting Pete and uh, her son, which is possible. I guess that'd be a dark twist to it, but it's already dark enough. And I I think Jesse's a so like a lot. I'd rather not have her be like a psycho. <laughs> but we'll see where it goes. I, again, I hope Jesse's alive for a while, despite being a Rishon shipper. I'd love her to turn to to the comic book Andrea and be really capable and important to Rick forever permanently in the future but I think she's going to meet a similar fate as she did in the comics but we'll see but yeah I hope Jesse just not, is just not a villain at least I just think she's too likable to be but again that could just be her like play that she puts on for the public and stuff but I don't know we'll see and uh yeah so that pretty much does it for this episode and, uh, yeah, I don't think I really missed anything. If I did, comment below, and I would love to talk about it. But, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. I have to go watch Raw. And, uh, peace. Great episode. One of my favorites of the season. This, like, 5B, the second half of season 5, has been really good so far. Much better than 5A overall. And I've loved, uh, season 5 more than season 4, I believe. I'd put it above that. And I'd, I could talk about comparing the seasons for hours. But, yeah, great episode. This has been the show's been really, really consistent for the past two episodes, and I love it. So yeah, catch you guys next time. Only two episodes left in season five. Can't believe it. Then it's done till October. Wow. But yeah, I'll catch you guys for next week's review and whatever else I post in between. And uh, peace.